About a week after the UK announced it was going to be sending Storm Shadow cruise missiles to Ukraine, Moscow announced its first intercept of that long-range projectile. Russian forces claimed to down a UK-supplied cruise missile along with several other weapons fired by Ukrainian forces. There was the first report from Moscow of the downing of a storm shadow since the UK confirmed their delivery. What is this weapon? We're going to find out by speaking with Mark Sloboda. We spoke with him on Monday via Skype from Moscow. A lot of uh, new things going on, uh, including obvious escalation. Um, Let's talk about some of that, Mark. And welcome, by the way. Don, thanks for having me. The Storm Shadow missile is an air-launched cruise missile. Uh, It is the first missile, right, that is being supplied uh, directly uh, to the regime in Kiev uh, by uh, a NATO state. Uh, They've been long asking for the U.S. Attackums, which is a uh, missile, a ground missile launched a missile. It can be fired from the HIMARS uh, that has a range of uh, over 300 kilometers. Um, they've The Kiev regime has long been pushing for the U.S. to supply those, but the U.S. has been hesitant, uh, meaning they have not supplied it, uh, primarily because uh, they want to save those stockpiles for China because the Marines want to use those for <laughs> nice. island clearing and hopping, uh, and they don't want to waste that. Most of the other things, artillery shells and the like, not not a huge uh, part of an air and naval defense, at least from the U.S. side uh, of Taiwan uh, or islands in the South China Sea. So, you know, the, in, it for a lot of the resources that the U.S. has sent to the uh, proxy conflict in Ukraine against Russia, that uh, there it, it's not dual use items, right? That that they feel that this is not uh, interfering with their plans for conflict with China off of its coast. You know the Thucydides trap uh, right. bit over Taiwan and the South China Sea. Uh, but uh, so that's why they haven't provided the attackums. But they said they were. Relieved that the United Kingdom is provi- has agreed to provide the storm the uh, storm shadow, and we're not talking about the GI Joe Ninja uh, that some of you may remember from uh, the uh, cartoons and the toys in the 1980s. <laughs> but the British have to give their their toys uh, names like that. Uh, so it is an air launched cruise missile. Um, the export version of it has a range of about 250 to 300 kilometers. The domestic version of it has a range of some up to 560 kilometers. So that's something that is actually cap- definitely capable of, of hitting Moscow. You know, also they- on this, just to, to, to inter- not to interrupt, mm-hmm. but um, it's, it's air launched, you know, so almost simultaneously the British are talking about, well, we've been training Ukrainians to fly F-14s and uh, we are prevailing on some of our uh, allies to provide some F-14s. Can, can it be launched from that? I mean, is, is this like a, you know, an in tandem uh, arrangement here? Yeah, well, OK, so um, I, I think we're certainly building there. Here's here's the problem with the the storm shadow it is and it has to be launched from air right and firing it from one aircraft is not the same as firing it from another aircraft right because it is adjusting to you know the the speed the weight everything is very specific right. which means a, a whole lot of internal programming has to be redone to transition it to firing from a tornado uh, which is what normally fires them, or, or a uh, typhoon. typhoon. Right. Yeah, typhoon to a um, a, a w- what Ukraine will be using to fire them. The only thing they have heavy enough to do so uh, of of their the aircraft they've had is a Su twenty four fighter bomber because they're Soviet, they're, yeah. they're pretty they're pretty big. I mean, they're actually they're way too big of a missile with too far too small of a payload. The calibers, for instance, are, are uh, much, uh, have a much bigger payload for a bit much bigger bang for the buck uh, for about the same size. But um, uh, regardless, I mean, this, this has multiple complications. One, the Kiev regime only has so many 
aircraft left and it's only so many su 24s and right. in the last week they've lost several more of them right. uh so they've only got a handful left and and the ex warsaw pact countries that are now part of nato have no more to give um so um that that's really limiting another limitation um is that uh, russian has air defense that has demonstrated the capability it's the best air defense in the world because that's what russia specialized in and it can uh take them down in syria they launched uh, eight storm shadows at Syrian government forces at one point, and Russia, the Russian Ministry of Defense claims it knocked down all eight of them. Um, then a third consideration is uh, they are, uh, in the final run, they are GPS guided to target. And the Western mainstream media ha has been full over the last three weeks of stories about how the HIMARS uh, is missing their targets because of electronic warfare jamming. Right. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. supply JDAMs, also air-launched uh, uh, glide bombs, uh, are rendered, quote-unquote, useless because of Russian electronic warfare jamming of the GPS signal. And the same thing with the Excalibur artillery fighted, uh, guide, uh, GPS guided artillery rounds, um, uh, also not hitting their targets. So I can see where you, you can see where this is leading. The storm shadow is vulnerable to that as well. So right. no game changer, even though the rumor mill is that the, that the UK is going to supply hundreds of these to the Kiev regime. And as you've rightly pointed out, um, to me, that uh, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S. government's position was that any missile uh, fired uh, from the Western Hemisphere against the United States would be regarded as an attack on the United States uh, by the Soviet Union. Right? If Cuba yep. fired a missile, that was an attack on the United States by the Soviet Union and would be regarded as an act of war. And Russia has been saying that providing long range missiles is a red line. But here's, you know, no one cares anymore because at this point they've realized that Russia is not going to attack NATO no matter what type of escalation they do. And their red line talk has proved toothless, right? Um, mm. Russia has m m gone through l hoops in this conflict in many different ways that aren't talked about to signal that it it did not it was going to do what it was going to do but it did not want conflict it did not want escalation with nato and nato is now just going to town with that and mm -hmm. they'll provide anything uh that you know now even missiles that can heat it can hit anywhere in Crimea, deep within Russia, uh, and and possibly if they get the long range version uh, to Moscow itself. And uh, M Russia is going to respond to this, but it probably will not be a direct response. All right, uh, they they will not be firing missiles at the United Kingdom. There will be no declaration of war or you know bombing in the Baltics or anything like this. Um, they may reply asymmetrically. They may. Uh, uh, blow up underwater pipelines and cut cables, but then again, that's a response to Nord Stream already on its own. That's right. Uh, cyber warfare, things like that. Uh, but for now, Russia's just got to truck through and take what hits will get through its air defense and EW defenses. And their best bet is to escalate to finish this sooner rather than later. And on that note, um, I think we'll go out and play the last part of that uh, piece that uh, President Kennedy had said in the process of enunciating that doctrine, which is something that I'd like to leave in people's ear as one of the possible outcomes of all of this. Mark, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking with you as always, and I look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thanks for having me. And this is the clip, which is a segment of a presentation made by then-President John F. Kennedy on October 22nd, 1962, that I think has special bearing on the situation today. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.